I got a super important message for the fellas today. And that is, stop waiting and just marry her, bro. And I can already hear the seething in the background from all the men. Mike, divorce laws. Mike, you're simping for the females. Nah, man. That's incorrect. I want to remind you guys of the whole point of this channel and the podcast that I co-host, which is the Masculine Revival Podcast. You guys should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Is that if we can make men more virtuous again, if we can make men men again, that impacts society as a whole. That means we can fight against this degenerate culture war. And how we win this culture war is by winning it in our homes first, right? That's by making sure men are stepping up to the plate and getting married and having children and raising them up in godly households. And this is why I'm so fired up about this topic. So stop waiting and just marry her, bro. Okay, what do I mean by this? Stop playing house with your girlfriend. Honestly, I'm of the opinion that if you're dating her beyond nine to 12 months, you don't actually know what you want. And if you can't see yourself marrying her in that time frame, that nine to 12 months, you probably don't want to marry her, bro. And so I think what, what catches a lot of guys and keeps them in this playing house, immature girlfriend situation is that they're fornicating. Okay. They're having premarital sex. And so when guys don't, when women give sex without absolute commitment, guys don't usually commit the way that they should. Now, I'm not going to put the burden of the responsibility completely on women. It's up to us, right? Men want to talk about men doing hard things, but then when it comes to controlling our peepees, that completely goes out the window. Men do hard things, but when I get a little tingly sensation down there, I can't help myself. I got to, I got to, I got to relieve myself. I got to, I got to have sex with my girlfriend. Dude, that's lame. It's lame. Now, let's take this a step further for a second. Let's say you have taken the step to proposing to her. Now your fiance, which I think is a super dumb term. It's cringe. I never called my wife, my fiance for that couple of month period that we were engaged. I just already called her my wife. So there's that. Um, but it is still luke lukewarm commitment, but it's a level slightly warmer, still lukewarm, but a level slightly warmer. The big problem here is that people make marriage to be this party and it becomes this party of vanity and narcissism, uh, the invites, the dress, the suit, open bar, what kind of food, who sits with who, the venue, planning it for two or three years down the line, right? People treating marriage as if it's a destination and not this beautiful union and a process and a journey that you go through with somebody. And as you grow together, this relationship flourishes in the ups and the downs and the in-betweens. People out here are really waiting two or three or four years to get married because they want to plan a perfect party. And then we wonder why so many people are getting divorced. Okay. So many people are getting divorced because they're getting married with no, they don't understand what marriage entails and what it entails. And I'm going to share this with you guys too, because I got to remind myself of this. And, and that is beyond the feelings, right? If you're getting married because you feel like you're in love and that's the only thing that's, 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 you know, making you move forward with that step, you've got it all wrong. There's going to be days where you wake up and those feelings maybe aren't there on that particular day, but it requires you to say, I do as a man or as a woman every single day, those vows that you exchange aren't just words you exchange in front of a photographer, you know, because it looks good and it's aesthetic and you can post it on Instagram later. Those are vows that are be meant to be upheld for life. And let's not forget it's a marital covenant with God. Right? So if you're just relying on feelings, if you're a believer and you, you have to rely on just feeling the Holy Spirit and feeling overwhelmed with that sensation all the time, I'm sorry, you're not going to be a Christian forever. It's about walking that path and being committed even when you don't want to be committed. Right? So let's talk about the divorce stuff for a second. And let's just take a step back before the, the, the whole marriage piece here. Stop cohabitating with her so early. Right? This is, this is going to do a couple of things. Number one, it's going to drive you into temptation to having sex with her. And I'm of the old school controversial opinion that a couple should not be having sex before marriage because it distorts the whole courting process. So many men end up marrying women that they shouldn't be marrying because the sex is good. Because their little heads, their little peepees are confusing with, are, are, are messing with their big heads. Your rational faculties aren't maintained. Right? You can't see her for what she is or who she is if you're having sex with her. And especially if she's good and bad, right? And it's the same thing for women, right? You're getting bonded to these men that don't actually care about you. 
right? And so you end up in these marriages where he's abusive or she's not a good wife. And so what? You have to divorce. Number two is cohabitation leads to a higher probability of divorce. So stop living together. So, so much, uh, um, or I should say not so much, but prematurely before you guys get married. The biggest thing, in the, and, and I think what I did right was that I proposed to my wife and then two months before we got married is when I moved in. And it's not to say that we haven't had ups and downs because we have had ups and downs, but you want to stack the odds in your favor. Okay. You want to stack the odds in your favor. Let me share with you a couple of facts about marriage too, because I can hear these guys in the background screeching and seething the West has fallen divorce laws. Listen, bro, there's nothing you can do about the divorce laws, but what you can do is vet the woman properly. Don't have sex before marriage. Don't cohabitate. Okay. If, if you want to court her properly, go for walks, go for coffee, go for dinner. Don't put yourself in a position where you guys are alone, where you could succumb to temptation because it's lust, it's premarital sex. It's all of that stuff. That's going to confuse the process. And if you can see her for who she is within nine to 12 months, six to 12 months, you're going to have a really good idea of who she is and if you can marry her or not. But let's, let's talk about divorce for a second, or let's talk about, sorry, marital benefits for a second. Married men make more money and married men have better sex. So I don't understand why this is big push to be promiscuous and to sow your wild oats and, and all this stuff. Cause this, as I've said before, this experience doesn't serve you. Right. And the level of intimate satisfaction that I experienced with my wife is far and away above anything I've ever experienced before. And I have a degenerate red pill past. And every year that I've been married to my wife, I make more money, right? Every single year, it's a better year because no pressure, no diamond. The pressure to provide, that biological impulse that we all have as men to provide for our families is way stronger when you're in that container of marriage where you want your wife to take care of the home and your children and you want her to stay at home, right? Especially with how expensive everything is right, is right now. It gives you that incentive, that drive to do that. I could rant about this all day long. Stop playing house with your girlfriend. Step up to the plate and be committed to her. Marry her within nine to 12 months. You don't need to spend multiple years with her to know who she is. If you didn't have sex with her, if you didn't move in too early, you would know in the first year if you should marry her or not. And that's when you should. And then have, be fruitful and multiply and have kids and fill that home with children that honor God. If you're engaged, elope. Don't spend all this money on a wedding. Save it for your home. That's what we did. We eloped. Okay. We, we took photos and then we purchased a home. Don't go on vacation. Don't waste money on a honeymoon. Don't waste money on a wedding that nobody cares about. Okay. You're going to show up and take photos and shake hands and kiss people. And some people are going to cry. Your parents are going to cry, but nobody really cares after. Elope, keep that money in your bank account and stop pushing this party so far into the future. Propose to her and within three to six months, marry her. Don't make it complicated. Marriage is a process. Marriage is a journey. Marriage is a beautiful union, not only with a man and a woman coming together as one flesh where those roads converge. Marriage is a covenant with God. Stop treating it like a party. Stop being lukewarm in your commitment to her and step into the role that God has commanded of you. Husband, father, provider, protector. So that's the message of this. And I know I ranted at a bunch of people's faces right now, but that is stop waiting and just marry her, bro. Because the culture, the, the society we live in right now needs more married men leading their homes with God at the helm. That's it.